I ask that everyone agree with me in prayer. Our Father, we come before your throne right now, Father God. God, first we just want to thank you for another day for being here, Father God. God, we coming for your throne, oh God. We coming for the, the mercy seat, Father God. This morning, God, asking for forgiveness, Father God, of all our sins, God, and all of our transgressions this morning, Father God, and all of our iniquities, God. God, we ask that you would forgive us for all of our, our lying and our cheating ways, God, from all of our disobedience to our parents, Father God, this morning, Father God, for even the littlest things, Father God. God, I just pray right now, Father God, that you'll come in this place right now, Father God. Let your presence fall like never before in this place, Father God. Oh, God, I pray that you will convict in this place, Father God. I pray that you will break every chain in this place, Father God. I pray that you will restore, Father God, and heal in this building today, Father God. Yes. Search up your heart. Search up your heart. Search up your soul right now, God. Sweep across this room right now as our heads are bowed before the king. I pray that you will enlighten some teenager, some young adult, even some, some, even some old person in this building today, Father God. God, you are so real. And as the song says, you are so amazing, Father God. And there is none like you in all the earth, Father God. The song says, I can search all over, but I still couldn't find nobody like you, Father God. Because you are holy, God. And you are love, Father God. You don't judge us, God, but you are love, God. Yes. And your mercy and your truth endures forever, Father God. <coughs> God, give me the strength, Father God. Hide me behind this cross, Father God. But hide, me, hide me behind Derek this morning, God. Hide me behind you this morning. And you speak, God. And you go forth, Father God. And I pray, God, that through this, through this, through this time, God, that people will begin to repent, God, and change their mindsets, God. Yes, yes, I pray for that you would get all the glory and all the honor, Father God. I pray that the devil would get no victory. Find yes. of every distraction. Find of everything that's unlike you, Father God. Nevertheless, Father God, not my, not my will, God, but this will be done in Jesus' name. I pray. Amen. Amen. If we have the Bibles. I ask you to go to Matthew 7, 13. I, uh, my occupation is I'm a, uh, I work in the team up program at the school. And I have a habit of walking back and forth and closing my eyes. That's just, that's just me, that's just what I do. So don't let that distract you. But I, I had a, I got into a, a conversation with some fifth graders, and I began to talk to them, and I began to talk to them. Somehow we ended up the end times. And one of the little girls, she got scared. She was like, I don't want to hear about that. And I said, this is not my place to even tell you about that, but I said, this is reality. And nobody wants to hear about reality. But I got to tell you what's, what's real. Because my soul and your soul is on the line. And there's so much going on, and the devil's out still coming to destroy all of us, and we know that. And the devil has us so distracted with, with the Facebooks, the Instagrams, with the, the iPads, the new cars, and the new TVs. And we're not focused on what really matters. But it's time to get focused. Yes. It's time to get focused because the king is on his way back. Yes. The king is on his way back. The Bible says in Matthew 7, and I see some of our kids don't even have Bibles. But we got phones, we get our kids phones, we get them everything else, but they don't even have a Bible. Come on, God. That's crazy. When I was going to church, we had a Bible. And this is probably a message that is probably is unpopular, but I'm not here to be like, I'm here to tell the truth. They say a friend who loves you will tell the truth. I don't have many friends, so if I get a friend or a fan today, it really doesn't matter because I have to stand before God naked and bare, just like every last one of you, and I have to give an account. The Bible says to enter. In verse 13, Matthew 7 13, it says, Enter by the narrow gate. <coughs> For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction. 
And there are many who go in by it. The Bible gives Jesus gives all of a choice. He said, enter. Young man, young woman, enter. This is the gate that you need to enter in. Enter by the narrow gate. The narrow gate is very narrow. It's very slim. It says, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way. Wide. What does wide mean? Wide, wide is real big. It's bigger than narrow. Wide is like if you go out there downtown and you look at the landing and you see all that water. That's wide. What is narrow? This is narrow. It's narrow. This is what narrow is. And the Bible says, there are many who go in by it. There are many who are going in down this wire gate. Reality is, many of us in this room right now are going down that gate. The narrow gate it's not a popular, it's not popular at all. The narrow gate, you gotta suffer going down this gate. Going on this narrow gate, you gotta give up some things. You gotta let go of some things. It's some friends that you can no longer hang on to. Yes. Well, nobody wants to give that up. But we'll sit here all day and sing how we love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. But well, we go right back in our car and we got Lil Wayne in our CD player right now. We got Lil Boost in our CD players right now. Some of you parents send your kids listen to the wrong thing right now. You wonder why they're acting out. Well, come on, but we talk about how we love Jesus. Yeah. Love is the action word. Yeah. God said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He gave something up yeah. for you. Yeah. But we don't give all out. And you know, we'll just give him the little things. And we'll just keep the rest of it. You can't do that walking on this narrow road. Mm. That's good. Walk That's, good. Amen. That's just reality. Some of you young men and some of you young girls, your parents raise up in church. You know it's right, but you still go to school trying to fit in and do everything else that you know is not right. That's not right. right. You watch things on TV that you're not supposed to be watching. That's not right. We curse and we all in film. That's not right. Well, on the wide road, the wide road to me is just like the thing of Christianity. Everybody want to be called a Christian. Christianity is popular. Oh, you a Christian? I'm a Christian too. Hey, you got a new J's on? I live in there. I got a new J's on too. Being a Christian is more of a trend. But being a Christian is more, it's supposed to be a lifestyle. I'm following after Christ. That's right. That's right. Not just a trend. I post on my Facebook today, I don't want to go to church. I want God. Forget being a Christian. I don't want this new day and age Christian stuff. I don't want that. I want all of God. Yes. I want his power. I want to go to heaven when I die. I want to be with the king. I want to be with the one who gave his only begotten son for me. I want the one who shed his, his blood for my sins. Yes. 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 That's the God that I want. Yes. The boys back in the old days, them boys were serious. Yes. The boys died for this word. The boys was Come real on. with God. The boys fasted 21 days for God. The boys were shipwrecked for God. That's when they never have. Yes. Right. But nowadays we want to be entertained. Come on, we want to sugarcoat the word. We want to water it down. I'm not here to do that. It says because narrow is the gate. And my mama say difficult is the way which leads to life. And then it says there are few who find it. Did you see that? And it says, because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way. That goes to show you right there, it's not an easy thing. For me to stay here today, the things I went through last, tossing and turning all night. To get in front of you guys and to bring forth this word. The things I had to go through, stay in focus all week. Just to be here today because I wanted to take it so serious. Because I didn't want to get up here and just put on a show. You got to stay focused. 
You got to keep your eyes on God. On this narrow part, on this narrow path, you got to pray. Because the attacks that come up against us, it ain't always easy. It's not easy being a speaker. It's not easy being a pastor. It's not easy being a first lady. It's not easy. I'm 23 years old. I like women. I like materials and things. I like the clubs. If it's a nice scene, the drinking, the smoking. But I can't do that. There are certain things you have to let go. Yes, yes. The Bible says. The Bible says, because there was a game difficult as white receives the light, and there are few who find it. Few. That word few means only not a lot. This is few right here. <laughs> this is few right here. Only few find it. This is reality, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. A lot of us right now are holding on to things that we need to let go. A lot of us right now are on that broad path. Yeah. But you know what? A lot of us, our hearts are so hard that we're not going to admit it. We'll still walk out of here to church the same old way. That's good. But one day you're going to realize. You're going to realize how serious it is. And my prayer, that's my prayer for me. God, help me. Never let me get to a point where I forget how serious it is. This thing is serious. We got to get rid of all the excuses. Oh, God knows my heart and, and all that. We got to get rid of all that. We ain't got time. We ain't got time for that. Right. You got to get rid of those excuses and man up and woman up. You got to walk this down a path. If you're going to be a Christian, then be a Christian. If you're going to be a follower of God, then be a follower of God. Yes. Stop being a wimp. Stop going all out and being halfway. If you're going to do it, then do it. You know that God got you. He said, I will never leave you. Yeah. 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 I, can't, I can't count a time or think of a time that God has ever left me hanging. Come on now. I can't never think of a time. I can't never think of a time when I was in temptation and God didn't make a, a way of escape or he made a way but I probably can't go through it. That's and he made a way. That's, That's not in his character. That's, That's not who God is. God, he is big. The yeah, Bible yeah. says that the, that the clouds are like desert to his feet. Woo! And the earth is like his footstool. We need him. He don't yeah, really need yeah, us. Yeah. But God will help you on this narrow path. Yeah. Some of y'all in his 16. When I was in 16, I was in foster care. I was praying. I was praying. Right in terms of God. You can do that. You can get on your knees and pray to God. You ain't got to pray no big religious prayer. God ain't all like he say he looks at the heart. Man, you judge my outward appearance. My father came up here in a, in a rain hat and some rain boots and some old dingy jeans and dirty sneakers. The first thing y'all to do is judge my outward appearance. But God looks at that my heart. Yeah, and he's looking at your heart right now. Amen. You don't have to pray nothing big. Just get on your knees and God asks me, help me, show me something. Yes. I want to be for real with you. That's right. All right. I'm going to skip down to verse 38. And my prayer is today that before you leave out of this place, even right now, you speak in and search your soul and your heart. Yes. Because the devil is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And we're going to begin to see things happening like never before. It's going to get real. I'm just going to tell you, it's going to get real. Obama, all this health care crap, all this plan, all this we're going to make a change, that is falsehood. That's not reality. That's right. That's right. Oh, you're preaching that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, they're going to get better. I'm just going to tell you, I don't believe it. So I, not according to my word. I don't think it is. They just got to tell us that so we can keep believing that. But if you're getting involved and you read, you already know it's going to get worse than this. That's right. See, God has to come back. Oh, yes, yes. So all this stuff is going to happen in order for him to come back. Look that's right. That. That's right. Oh, you Amen. Wars are going to break out. That's right. You're probably going to see things happening. Y'all are going to see how they're going into the elementary schools, shooting up people, movie theaters, and shooting up. That's reality. That's what God said is going to happen, okay? That's right. 
So don't be surprised when it starts happening. Don't be surprised when it starts happening. Try to get in Jacksonville, Florida, and you start seeing it. And you might see a missile shooting over here. God's word is so real that people are dying for this word. Yes. We have full access to God. We have full freedom to worship God and to get him his word without worrying about all that right now. Yes. That's right. Hallelujah. It's quiet in here. But I understand because this is the reality. Come on. But this word got to go forth. That's right. We can't always poop and holler. We ain't got time in. We can't always do that. You can't always have a message that's going to make you feel good. It's I'm not trying to speak to your emotions. I'm not trying to make you feel Come good. On. I'm trying to speak what's real to you. Yeah. To your hearts, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. From a young man, I'm 23. You can do this. Yes. You right. can do this. Right. You can walk this narrow path. God is not going to leave you hanging. Yeah. You can do this. Yeah. Stop telling your kids. You can do this. Yeah. Help the kids do this. They can do this. Yeah. Maybe you need to change some of your ways yeah. so they can start seeing you yeah. more. Yeah. 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 That's what it starts at. It starts at the head. At the head ain't right. The kids ain't going to be right. right. The problem is, I'm going to tell you what the problem is. We too busy trying to be our kids' friends. All right. We too busy wanting our kids to like us and all that stuff like that. And then we vibe with them. We go out to the clubs with them. We listen to the way with them. We sit right there at BT and listen to all that stuff right in front of them. And then you wonder why they go to school cussing at the teachers and all that. Because it's you. You gotta change that. You know better than that. The Bible says, verse 21, Now everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, Come on. do you see that? Lord, Lord. Not, everyone Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Right. Everybody shout, Lord, Lord. But you still dealing with that on the sin. Do you not know that God hates sin? Amen. God hates sin. God hates sin. Think of the very thing that you hate. Think of that person that you hate so much that you're really supposed to be loving. Think about that. Think of the word hates. Hates. God hates sin. He hates evilness. He hates wickedness. We know that we were still drawn in it. Why is that? He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, this word many is, is something, else, something else. It says, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Come on. So many people on TV. Everybody want to be an evangelist. Everybody want to be a pastor. Everybody want to be a bishop. Everybody want to be seen. Everybody want to be heard. Everybody this and that. Come on, it comes to be in those positions. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mom. Foster mom. My auntie. She said, baby. We're not going to talk about that. No, we're not. Stay focused. <laughs> She always just tell me I'm a preacher. I'm a preacher boy. Every time she threatened to kill me out, I'm going to pray to God. She's going to save me. God going to save me. But to be a preacher, to be a speaker, even a position I'm in now, because it's stuff that comes with it. It's a cost. Sure. Yeah. You can't do what everybody do. You can't go where everybody go. You can't say all those things. You can't watch what everybody You can't do that. I don't want to do that. You know what? I don't want to do that. I want to be connected to the power. When I go places and I speak, I want, I want it to be effective. Now, if you deal with the devil and the sin, and you're a pastor, you got all these names, let me tell you something. People are going to know that you're going to be speaking out the flesh. It ain't going to be effective. It ain't going to do nothing. I got to be connected to the source. Wherever I go, I got to speak with authority, with power. I want to see change. That's what we need to see. Forget the entertainment. Anybody got to have a gift and a talent and use it. But when you are... When you are when you are connected to the source, yeah. to that power. It says, many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name. And there's so many wonders in your name. Yes. 
You feeding the homeless, so what? What's your intention of doing that? That's right, that's it. Yeah. Uh-huh. Right here, you're in our church and candy and giving money. That don't mean nothing. That's good. You think you coming to church, going to get you into heaven? That ain't going to get you into heaven. I told some men, young men last night, I said, look, I said, bro, I said, every last one of y'all got to stand before God, naked and barren. Young lady, young lady, young man, you got to stand before God on your own. Your mom ain't going to be there with you. That's your right. pastor ain't going to be there with you. You got to stand before God. That's right. That's right. And if you ain't ready, My God. if you ain't ready, you ain't ready, boy. That's gonna be cool. <sighs> Hell is real. Yes, 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 yes. Heaven is real. Everybody want to go to heaven. Yes. But hell is real, too. Yes, yes it is. Yes. And there's so many people who are deceived. Yes. They think they're going. They think they got God. They connect with God. No. The Bible says, many there be. Don't let the devil come and deceive you. Don't let the devil think just because you come dressed up and you come get your little whoop, whoop, whatever on. Don't let the devil deceive you. That's right. That ain't going to get you into heaven. Don't think because you throw a little something in the offer plate, that's going to get you into heaven. Don't think because you up in the choir, that's going to get you into heaven. No. That's right. It ain't about church. It's about relationship. Yeah. If you ain't got no relationship, you can forget about it. That's reality. And then it says, and then I would declare to them, to, to the many who would say to him, Lord, Lord, to the ones who profess that they know Jesus, to the ones who were caring about Jesus last night while they were doing what they were doing, while they was in the club, they didn't feel no conviction in their heart. But they're going to stand before God. But for the ones who's always making excuses and they can give the devil a sin and God's going to forgive you, do you know that like, grace is going to run out? Why? You can't keep doing that and think God ain't going to punish you for that. This is what you're going to say. He says, and then I'm going to declare to them, I never knew you. You say, I never, you say, I I, 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 I never, never knew, knew you. you. Young people say, I, I never, never knew, knew you. you. Do you want God to say that to you when you step in front of It says that God's eyes is like a flame of fire. It says his feet are like grass. Angels worship at his feet. I was just reading this morning, I just scanned through something in 2 Corinthians, or 1 Corinthians, where it said that Paul or John one of them went to heaven, and, and it was that it was so beautiful out there that they couldn't even utter, it was unlawful for them to utter the words. When I think about a guy who says that dust are like clouds unto his feet and the earth is like his footstool, I think about that. I don't want to go up against a guy like that. I don't want to be separated from a guy like that. Think about all the things that I've been through, how he's kept me. I don't want to be separated from that. When I think about a guy who was who sent his only son into the world, he was beaten. Yeah. He was beaten. So we forget about those things. He was beaten for your transgressions and your iniquities. Yeah. Yeah. This God who was so full of love, why would you not want him? Woo. We want love from everybody else. We look for everything else to satisfy us. And to complete us, we look for all these men and all these women. And they hurt us, and we still run. And we chase after all these things who can't satisfy us. We chase after cars and rims and the materialistic things. We chase after music to make us feel this temporary happiness. We look for approval from everybody else. But what about the approval from God? What about running to God? What about crying out to God, steady mama? What about crying out to God? What about his love? What about how he feels? I'm going to share this last 
just a little bit. And then I'm going to pray and I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get out of your way. I don't even know our time limit, but I was working with these kids and the kids just acting up, acting bad. I'm just, I don't like calling kids bad, but I mean, this day, it was off the chain. <laughs> and uh, I said, I couldn't figure it out. You throw a little fur, they still wild that. I'm going to call your mama. Still wild in that. But God showed me. Later on, he should begin to show me that I don't like disrespect. That's me, period. I don't like no kid disrespect me. You sh that's something I hate. I hate when a kid disrespects me or disrespect the uh, adult. I just believe, I don't believe in that. I believe that every child should learn some type of respect or manners or quick, fast, and whatever. But God showed me the same way those kids are disrespecting me is the same way I do him. Yeah. That's right. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. And until I get my act together, until I start, start, start respecting him, that's when the kids start respecting me. Yeah. And many of us here today, we're disrespecting God. Yeah. We disrespect God. We know of God. We know a little something, something. But we're disrespecting God. What are the things we watch? What are the things we say? We disrespect him so much. That's crazy. My God. Fifth graders, I got moved from third graders to fifth graders, and my boss didn't think that was a good idea. He felt like me and you know the fifth graders was gonna clash in because you know at my job I'm very strict, like I'd be I'd be on them. And fifth graders don't like it, they don't like structure, they don't like discipline. So my boss was like, I don't think that's a good idea. So come Monday, the next day, uh whenever that was. I got fifth grade and I started getting my act together. Me and fifth grade, we don't have no problems. All right, we straight. I got my act, I'm trying to get my act right with him. They straight. It says, and then I'm going to declare to them, I never knew you. That word, know, knew, means to know. It means to know something. God has to know you. You don't need to know of God, you need to know God. You need to know God. Amen. If you don't know God, I would suggest before you leave this place that you get a hold of somebody or you get a hold of this altar and you better begin to cry out to God. Yes, yes. yes. And I mean that. Yes. yes. Just like all those other people that y'all look up to are real, God is real. <laughs> yes. And you better look around you. You ain't gotta you ain't gotta search far or high or none of that to see God. God is real. God said everything was created by him or for him. Things visible and invisible. The trees, the birds, you, you real. You can drop dead right now. Do you really know where you were going? Are you sure? Are you certain that you were making it to heaven? I ain't talking about that track you read or about what your mama said. Anybody, I'm talking about you. I'm talking to you. If we had a divider up right now, you couldn't see your friend or nobody else. I'm talking to you personally, directly. Do you know God? Are you giving your all for him? Are you sold out for God? Or are you sold out for the devil and you kind of sold out for God? Are you spending more time with, with, the, with the things of the world or are you spending more time with God? Do you really love God? Do you really want to let go of those things? Do you really want to be set free? Do you really want everything that God has for you? If not, don't waste your time on coming to church. Don't fool nobody else. Don't waste, don't waste the time. Why waste your time? Either you for God or against him. You can't serve God and man. That's reality. It says, I will declare that I'm never need to depart from you. You who practice lawlessness. I never knew you. Depart from me. Ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> if we don't get it right, that's going to be around until we stand before God. I never knew you. I don't care if you're 60 years old, 70 years old, you still going to be lost and don't know God. That's right. You still going to be fooling your own self. Mm -hmm. Come on now. This is reality. God is coming back. Mm -hmm. yes, he is. A man. No woman, no boy, no girl ain't worth hearing God say, I never 
you need to depart from you. It ain't, I'm going to be real. It's no sex. It's none of that. So I ain't even got to like be careful with it because some of y'all hear it already. I hear the kids saying it all day at school talking about that stuff. That's crazy. None of that stuff is worth going to hell for. That's right. Because every last one of you have a choice and a chance right now. Just like when you came through those doors, you entered those doors, and you chose to sit where you sat out right now. You have power. You have a God that you are connected to. You have free will. God ain't going to force you to do nothing. If you don't want to do it, you choose your eternity. If you don't want a relationship, so be it. That's not with a boyfriend or girlfriend or husband. You don't want to be with me, so what? Me and fish in the sea. Whatever. But it's all the Lord God. You can't run from him. You can't hide from him. You can get on your bunk bed. You can do all that. But you can't run from this guy. Because he sees everything. Even though it's a roof through here, he sees that. When you sleep and you're fornicating and you commit adultery on your husband and your wife, God sees that. We cut out the life and then we we good. No. God can see that. And I'm just telling you it's real because I've done that. I've been there, like I said, I got married. One man wasn't ready for it. Thought I was, thought I was in there. Things got hard. I'm trying to walk with God. And I failed. Women after women after women after women. I've had the sexual transmitted diseases. That stuff is real. Since some of y'all don't think it's real, that stuff is real. I'm telling you it's real. I've been out there alone in the foster care system. They didn't think I was going to really make it. I didn't think I was going to make it. I didn't think that it would ever come to a day while I'd be standing here doing this. I even told the brother, I said, man, this is my first time doing this. I don't really, I don't even know. But God, it ain't nothing but his grace and his mercy. And let me tell you something. As I close, let me tell you this. I'm still reaping some stuff that I sold, don't I? He had grace and he had mercy, but I'm still reaping some of that stuff too. Don't think that you ain't gonna get chastised or punishment for some of that stuff. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's real. I got a baby right now that's possibly mine because I'm out there wilding out and being disobedient and whatever. Spending money recklessly on fashion, on all that stuff. And this is reality. I was on my way then I had a brother tell me, he said, man, if you don't tighten up, he said, bro, you ain't gonna see the 8 to 30. While some of y'all in here is 17, 18, how many got 17 or 18 in here? 19, what's the young? One. 15, 14, 13, I don't know your age. I was a foster care. Me and my foster mom contested this. I had a young man who was close to. I had smoking weed, wild or not. Went to sleep one night, somebody laced his weed, heart's butts in his chest. You could die at 17, too. God don't have favor. He doesn't, uh, he's not a respect of persons. I had another young man I went to elementary school with. Wrong place at the wrong time. He had good Christian folks. Everything about him was on point. He was a commercial, he was a model. He did all that, but then he got slid off the wrong path. The wrong place at the wrong time. Out in the Yuki Gardens on Cass Avenue. Some of y'all know what's that. Girl reeled him into the house, got him to come into the house. He didn't even know it was some men in there waiting on him. Man, he came in there. They beat him half to death. They had a crowbar. They had a baseball bat. They even had like one of those uh, weight, weight bars. Beat him. Wasn't even 18. Then you know what the crazy part about that is? The girl realized she had the wrong person. Wow. Wrapped his body up, threw him in the back of the car, took him out of the Trout River. And the way I heard the story in was that I guess the nerve in his body moved, so somebody turned around and shot him. That's reality. 
You think you're big and you're bad and you're grown and God will show you. Don't you run. I've been running my whole life. I was in my home, ran from that, marriage, ran from that, didn't want to be committed, just started running, running from God. And I started realizing if I ain't tight enough, I was going to die too. And that's not what I want. And I don't want that for you. Young man, young woman, sir, ma'am, whoever you is, this is just not a new Sunday. This is an everybody yeah. Sunday today. And you can have a new life and a new chance today to get this thing right today. Yeah. So before you clap, since that's what we're so used to doing, tradition, we're so used to coming to church and being dressed up and standing in the pulpit. That's what we're used to. Time out for that. It's time to get right. It's time to repent. A lot of us got unforgiveness in our heart right now. We got people we ain't, we ain't talked to years for unforgiveness. And you want God to forgive you? No sir, no ma'am. We gossip, we doubt each other, we judge each other, we hurt each other. The Christians are the worst ones at this. But we're supposed to be the father of God. We're supposed to be the fathers, fathers of Christ. This is reality. If you never remember my name, like I tell everybody else, if you never remember me, if you never remember my name, 